Okay, sounds good. And uh, I will move to the rest that the um previous lecture. A uh, previous lecture that, that I uh, that was explaining about deep neural network for acoustic modeling, and the uh the I was explaining the basic uh, the feed forward uh neural network. And then today I will explain about uh, the convolutional neural network, a uh, recurrent neural network, and transformer. And then uh, the, the, we will also move to the neural network language model. So today I have to explain many things, so I will go through quickly. <laughs> but if you guys have questions, yeah, mi missing some point, please also feel free to ask me. Okay, so uh, the, since this is the acoustic modeling part, so we are still in the acoustic modeling at the session, not in the end-to-end, -end. but this neural network component can, actually can be used for the end-to-end -end neural network as well. So please uh, make sure to uh, the, the, the understand this kind of programs and so on. And the last time I was explaining about the feed for the neural network, and then now I move to the convolutional neural network. So convolutional neural network is actually having a lot of configurations. Number of input channels, number of output channels, filter size, stride, uh, the path, uh, the, the, and the similar configuration uh, for the pooling and so on. And these kind of combinations are making the, the convolutional neural network uh, the, to be a kind of a, uh, the powerful. And the, why the other uh, convolution neural network is uh, originally having a strong other uh, the performance in the speech, uh, sorry, the image to be used for the speech uh, processing is that it's a kind of obvious speech actually has a very visible pattern in two dimension. This is actually a spectrogram. And I, as you see that uh, from our kind of our coding assignment one, the, we have a pattern. We can actually analyze it similar to what we have done in the uh, the image processing. So this is actually the, the, uh, the original motivation that the people started to actually use the convolutional neural network for speech recognition. So let's uh, start to discuss about the uh, several configuration that I have mentioned uh, for uh, the each of the simple example. So first, uh, the just focusing on the 1D convolution, uh, the, and then I will explain about the uh, extension of the 2D. So, 1D convolution cases and the very simple cases, we actually can just add uh, the, the performing the uh, the uh, the uh, the convolution uh, operation, which is written by uh, this kind of bar, uh, the equation form. Uh, in this case, the uh, filter size is very important. Uh, in our experiment, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the slide. Uh, I will just show you the result of the, the using the uh, filter size too. And then uh, the computing the, uh, the, the, the values for uh, the each of the point, uh, the combination of the two filter size, two filter size, two filter size, two filter size, and then getting some result. So this is a kind of a typical uh, convolution operation, okay? However, uh, there is actually uh, the, the one issue which is, if we're using the uh, larger filter size, actually the, by using this operation, number of output becomes four, right? The number of the input is five, but it becomes four. So actually the, uh, the number of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, length becomes shorter. So, which is maybe okay, but it's actually easier if we have a, every time other using this operation with the same length. And then uh, people usually using padding, just simply uh, padding zero uh, and so on. Uh, by doing that, we can actually uh, making the number of the input and the number of the output after the other composition same. So padding is usually using for this kind of purpose or some other purpose as well but mostly to keep the kind of the same length to the input, okay? So this is the, in now I explain the filter side and the, pa the padding. And the second important part is stride. So I just kind of, you know, explain the way to kind of the, uh, the making the, uh, this kind of filter operation for each one shift, 
right? But the, uh, if the information is redundant, we have to have so much overlap. So the, in the simple case is that, uh, for example, making the slide two. And then actually we can uh, reduce the computational cost, right? But however, in these cases, actually number of the other uh, output would also be reduced. So that is that uh, we have to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the be careful about it. However, this other, uh, the, uh, in other words, by using Strider, we can actually control the, the, the length of the output. So this is actually called the, the down sampling technique. So speech features is actually quite high resolution at uh, 10 milliseconds, which means you know, just one frame, uh, just one second of the speech, we have 100 frames. And it's actually quite kind of dense information, quite uh, redundant information. And the, uh, the scanning each of the kind of 10, 10 milliseconds of the frame is actually high in terms of the computational cost. So if instead uh, we actually using the uh, stride operation and then uh, we can actually reduce the uh, length. So this uh, the, the, is, uh, the, the technique is called CNN based down sampling. There are several other ways to uh, the, the make a down sampling and so on. But nowadays, uh, many people are actually using the, the, the convolutional neural network and then uh, the controlling the strider to actually making the, uh, the, the length shorter so that uh, the we can uh, the reduce the computational cost. So strider operation is uh, the quite often used for the downsampling. And then uh, the, now uh, the, the, I explained about the, uh, the, uh, all of the approaches with the kind of uh, 1D cases. But we can actually extend this to the two D cases, which is the, the like an image, and the spectrogram is also image, two D two D information. So it can be regarded as an image, and then in these cases, actually all the kind of the the, the filter size stride the part uh, that that I mentioned can be changed. Uh, the the to consider the additional dimension. Uh, in this case, is y axis. So. Uh, the, in the kind of a basic uh, the, the operation in the filter uh, from the, uh, the one dimensional to two dimension is to just consider the y axis. Okay. And in, in this case, filter size is two times two. And the basically, uh, the, this kind of operation is the same uh, and applied to the all of the kind of uh, the image. And then uh, the, the, the other kind of discussion, like if we want to make the length to be same, we just using a padding. And if we want to make a stride, not only the downsampling to the, uh, the time dimension, but also want to downsampling to the, uh, the frequency dimension, we can actually perform the stride uh, in the frequency axis as well. But that's usually don't use it. People just are reducing the number of dimensions. Uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the, the length uh, the, in the, uh, the stride operation. So that is the kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, the extension of the, the 2D composition. And the last part that I didn't uh, the fully explain is the uh, uh, number of uh, the input channels. So uh, the uh, image cases, uh, we have uh, several kind of uh, actual instance of the, uh, the, the input channels like RGB and so on. And the speech cases, there are several ways to explain about uh, the using the, uh, the multiple uh, input channels. Like for example, spectrogram is uh, the not real value, but the complex. So in this case, we may use a real and imaginary and then making the number of channels too. And also the in the beginning of the, 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 the uh, the MMCC, I also explained about the delta and the, uh, delta features and so on. That can also be a, a possible kind of a number of channels. And then uh, the, the by using that, we could have a, a more channels and so on. And then we can actually further uh, the extend the output of the channels. Uh, in these cases, just prepare uh, more uh, the, the, uh, the combination uh, matrix uh, the, the, uh, for the number of channels and so on. Uh, this uh, the, the, actually I cannot the, the busy, make it the, the visible uh, the, anymore, but uh, by using the uh, the number of uh, the, the output channels, 
we can actually further uh, make a rich other uh, information and so on. Oh, actually, I, I make the, the, the prepared slide. Yeah, but this one is the case that, the, that we have a two channels and so on. Basically, uh, the, we make it almost kind of consider it independently. And then uh, the, having more kind of a, a representation uh, instead of just having a one other filter uh, for each of the image and so on. Okay, uh, that's it. A kind of a, uh, the basic uh, the, 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 uh, filter. But uh, in addition, uh, the convolution usually, uh, the operation usually combined with the pooling operation, that is just taking a max or mean uh, in this kind of a, the, the, some region of the image. Uh, for example, if we have a, this kind of a features, and then uh, the max value in this region would be which, which one? 12, right? <laughs> what is the mean? Six, yes. Yeah, just a simple operation. Uh, that is uh, the, the also quite uh, the commonly used in the combination operation. Uh, by uh, the com combining with the convolution operation. So that uh, please also the, remember this pooling operation. And the pooling itself is, this kind of a local pooling itself is often used, but another kind of a, uh, the frequently used pooling operation in speech is the mean pooling across all the frame. This means that we taking the mean across the time. Usually we do it for each sentence and so on, each utterance and so on. What does it mean? It's actually getting the utterance level feature. We mostly focus on the frame level feature, but we actually also have an important uh, the sentence level feature, which can be a speaker characteristics or emotion or a topic and so on. And this operation is also often used uh, in our kind of uh, the framework to get again such kind of uh, the sentence level uh, information and so on. So uh, the, this kind of uh, the pooling across the other uh, frame is very important operation. So please also remember it. Okay, so uh, that's a kind of a general uh, the, the uh, discussions about the, uh, the convolution neural network. But again, this uh, the convolution ne neural network is actually used for the, the acoustic model. Even in the very beginning of the speech recognition, uh, it's actually 1989 that one, uh, that, uh, the, the Professor Weibel here, uh, that he actually uh, that, uh, developed the, uh, the convolution neural network based acoustic model in the very beginning of speech recognition error. And he called it time delay neural network. And that is actually quite uh, that, uh, a big impact. But uh, up to that time, interestingly, uh, we could not scale this part. And then at that time, the, the Gaussian mixture is due to the shallow computation, it can be easily scaled. So uh, at some kind of a period, like the 90s to the, uh, the early 20, uh, 2000, actually still uh, the, uh, the Gaussian mixture was better. And then the data, deep neural network actually uh, becomes the dominant, this work, uh, again, it becomes uh, uh, the, the important, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the landmark uh, in our uh, the approach and so on. Um, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the CNN for acoustic model is uh, the, the mostly uh, the using input channel as a one, uh, but we sometimes using the, uh, the, the delta feature uh, or uh, the complex number like the real and the, uh, imaginary uh, and so on. And the, uh, we still have a lot of other parameters because convolution neural network also are the, including the design of the, the batch normalization, activation function, uh, residual, uh, the gating connection, and the more. Uh, that's uh, is a little bit uh, the, the, the uh, advanced topic, so I don't fully kind of cover it, but the, there are a lot of actually hyperparameters. So uh, the, the, the CNN, uh, it's quite difficult uh, to optimize to get the kind of best configuration. Uh, so 
uh, that uh, some people uh, want to work on the CNN, new configurations of the CNN in speech recognition, acoustic models, and so on. Uh, that's a very great direction. But I uh, fully recommend you to actually uh, the, the, uh, checking the existing, uh, well, uh, the working uh, the architecture, like, for example, some of the architecture uh, that are developed in the image uh, processing, computer vision, uh, the, the, and so on. Because again, there are so many hyperparameters, and the tuning them is uh, very difficult. I also have a such kind of experience. I uh, the, the, try to use a kind of a CNN for the uh, the BLS, uh, the CNN and the BLSM uh, that combine the architecture in acoustic modeling, and I actually explored the CNN architecture more, but too many hyperparameters, so it was very difficult. But instead, I just tried to exactly use the same configuration that was used for the VGG uh, network. And then it's suddenly <laughs> the working. So uh, the, the, that means that, that uh, it was well kind of optimized network uh, in the, uh, the uh, other the area seemed to be very important for speech and so on. So uh, the, I recommend you not to waste your time uh, for other, other too many configurations but try to uh, initially using the uh, some configuration that already used in the uh, other area or speech areas and so on. Uh, by the way, uh, the, after the, uh, the we have a CNN, all other part is same, just using the hybrid uh, the acoustic modeling so that we just replacing the, the, uh, the likelihood part to the CNN based uh, the, the softmax, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, the acoustic model, and then divided by the prior, and so on. Okay, uh, that's the, uh, the CNN part. Uh, any questions? Okay, sounds good. By the way, CNN, the one of the benefits is actually by using the, uh, the, the, the filter operation and so on, uh, getting the kind of a longer context. So longer context is very important. In the previous feed forward neural network, we concatenated it and then making a long context. But the CNN case is just using the large filter size to uh, use a kind of long context. And the context information is very important for speech recognition. Um, I am speak skipping the uh, low audio uh, processing and uh, the just uh, the move to the recurrent neural network. Okay, so uh, let, let's move to the, uh, the explanation about the recurrent neural network. So uh, the HMM uh, that we uh, the, the consider to use the, uh, uh, the speech uh, the feature uh, in the corresponding uh, the uh, corresponding the uh, if we try to get the speech uh, the, the posterior at uh, the, some time t, we usually corresponding to get the, uh, the information about the corresponding time. But the CNN actually can, with a kind of filter side, we can expand it. But uh, uh, the, this is uh, the, the, uh, one way to expand the, the context. And the other way to a uh, context, uh, the expand the context is actually using a, a, a neural network. Especially the kind of neural network is uh, very good to handle uh, this uh, the, the uh, long context and so on. So that I will uh, try to explain it. For example, instead of uh, considering to use the only uh, the target frame here, uh, we can uh, try to use the whole entire history. That's the kind of neural network can easily do that. So a uh, recurrent neural network is basically uh, written uh, with this form. Uh, without this yt minus one, this is actually exactly uh, the corresponding to the field for the neural network. However, by using this, uh, the, uh, by using this kind of previous uh, the, the information, we can actually uh, the, the make a better uh, the prediction uh, of the uh, next state. That is a kind of very simple uh, the equation of the neural network. 
This looks like just consider the previous context, right? But if we expand this equation to the all kind of bar at a time, the neural network, uh, the current neural network is actually written like this. Uh, it actually has a, uh, the all possible uh, path to uh, consider the history and so on. Okay. So uh, the, by uh, expanding this one, uh, this is a, exactly the same neural network, but it's just expanding across the time. And then since uh, the, these arrow exist, so we actually can hover information from uh, the beginning of the feature to the the uh, the uh, to the uh, the last of the uh, the prediction uh, the, of the uh, the neural network uh, and so on. And then we just put the softmax activation, and then this corresponding to consider all previous features to predict the current uh, the 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 uh, the state HMM state and so or uh, the character uh, and so on. But this doesn't actually include the future context, right? Sometimes future context is actually very important. And then what? How to do that? We actually do it in the uh, the opposite direction of the other uh, neural network. And then uh, now uh, that uh, we can get the, uh, the future context. Uh, the, the previous one is the previous context. This one is considered the history. This one is the future context. And uh, how to leverage it? We just simply uh, the concatenate uh, these two information and then uh, we actually can consider entire context uh, from uh, the, 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 uh, the, the old uh, the history to the future. Uh, this uh, neural network is uh, called a uh, bidirectional uh, recurrent neural network. By the way, this uh, bidirectional recurrent neural network and the time-delayed neural network that the Professor Weibel uh, the proposed, both of them are actually proposed in Japan. So when the, the, uh, the uh, Professor Weibel was in the uh, Japan, uh, the, the, he uh, the invented a time delay neural network. And the, uh, the, uh, the actually, the, 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 yeah, Weibel is also my friend, but the, uh, the, the bidirectional neural network that's, it was proposed by the, the, uh, Mike Schuster. He was actually my former colleague. And he uh, 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 proposed uh, this uh, the recurrent neural network uh, the architecture. So I'm very proud that the, from Japan to famous uh, the architecture was uh, the born and which is uh, the importantly used uh, in the, the other speech and other other areas. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, the way to kind of consider not only history, but also future context. That is great. Uh, but it actually has an issue in the bidirectional uh, or the simple recurrent neural network. That is, actually, it is not very good at consider the long context feature. So instead, the people actually started to use the, uh, the LSTM, uh, long short term uh, the memory uh, recurrent neural network. And this is actually quite interesting. It's actually having uh, two types of that. Uh, the, 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 uh, the hidden state, uh, and then try to kind of uh, avoid, uh, uh, try to the, the, uh, the, the, uh, memorize the, uh, the, uh, the long uh, the range uh, context uh, instead of uh, just kind of leaving a recurrent neural network uh, like this kind of architecture. So I will explain it a bit more detail about the LSTM. So this is the, uh, the detailed uh, the LSTM block. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but I can explain it the one by one. So first, uh, the, we have a very important concept, cell. This is actually keeping the history information, okay? And the history means that, you know, what we have spoken before, right? And then uh, the, how to keep this kind of a memory? So first, uh, if this kind of a history is not important, uh, what we should do? We just kind of forget it, right? So this cell information can actually forget uh, the history of the information. 
And then uh, the new information is, is you know, coming. And it's, if it is very important to memorize, and then uh, the, we can actually store this kind of information in the cell. And then if this kind of memory information is important to be to output uh, to the, uh, the, the our kind of prediction, and then uh, the, we will uh, the, use the cell from the cell information to output this information. However, we are not sure this inf information is important. Well, we are not sure uh, this information uh, we can forget. Well, we are not sure this information is important to be uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the passed to the, the output. So this not sure that information is actually represented of the gating information, gating function. So for example, gating function is a kind of a way to uh, the softly uh, the, the pass the information. If uh, the gate function is completely zero, this means that this information is not important. So we don't have to pass it, right? Uh, this, uh, there are some information and then uh, the gating information here. And if it is zero, it goes to zero, right? So this is a way to, for example, if we want to forget uh, that we actually uh, the, 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 the make a zero here. And if we want to keep this information, uh, the if, uh, the, the, if the gating becomes one, and then we can pass this information as it is, right? And then since the, this is actually through the sigmoid, so this is something between. So softly, if this information is important to uh, the, the, the memorize, or this is not very important information uh, to uh, the, the discard, and so on, these are actually controlled by gating function. By the way, this one is also the data-driven manner, just using a neural network to kind of predicting what information is important or not. So this actually are the, the, are the uh, the the, uh, the process is called the gating. So actually, uh, this uh, the the, uh, the operation that whether we want to kind of keeping previous information or we forget this information is actually written by gating. Okay, so it's after the sigma. It can be zero to one, right? And if this information is uh, the, the, given this information, probably better to forget the cell information, we can just really forget it. Same for the new information. This new information seems to be important, so let's put in the memory. Then we have a gating here. Finally, uh, if we actually want to uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the forget, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, if we want to kind of uh, the put this information to the next output, uh, since it is very important, uh, then uh, we can again using the other uh, gating information, a uh, gating operation. So LSTM is using this kind of three gating uh, data function to control the memory cell. And then it actually can uh, detain very long range uh, information instead of the vanilla, uh, the, the recurrent neural network. So this is actually uh, the concept of LSTM and actually quite working very well. So instead of uh, the having the, uh, the, the uh, recurrent neural network, by using LSTM, even this is very uh, the far, if the neural network is trained so that we can keep in the, some of the, uh, the cell information, and then let's say, for example, in these cases, uh, the, the, uh, the if uh, the, we have our uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the consider uh, all information uh, the, and the, uh, the all information uh, that this forget is actually the other uh, one means that we don't forget it, okay? So if uh, the, the all, every time G forget equal one and the other G input equal zero, uh, the, this means that the, uh, the do not forget any time and do not kind of uh, getting the, any other information from two to six. And then we actually have a clear solution 
of getting the information from x1 to y6. Very clear direct path of this information we can realize uh, based on the LSTM. So by using this, uh, we can actually uh, the care about the long range information uh, by using LSTM. And there are a lot of other ways to actually keeping the, uh, the, the long memory. And the GRU is another option and so on, but it is uh, a little bit advanced, so I will skip this explanation. And this uh, the, the, uh, long range information uh, the, is actually quite powerful and the, it is used for not only for the acoustic model, but to, uh, the also for the language model. And I will also explain the LSTM, uh, the use of the LSTM in the language model uh, that they uh, context uh, uh, later uh, in this section. Okay, so uh, the, this is a kind of uh, the, the basic explanation uh, of the language, uh, the, the LSTM, uh, recurrent neural network. But it's again can be used for the speech recognition. And then uh, it is actually uh, the quite uh, the powerfully uh, used in uh, the speech recognition used to be. Uh, by the way, compared with the LSTM, uh, compared with CNN, LSTM actually don't have uh, so many configuration options just for the number of layers and the number of hidden states and so on. So it actually do not have uh, so many variations uh, of the configuration. So this is probably also another reason that the initially, uh, the, the, after the feed the neural network was uh, the successful, uh, speech people actually started to use LSTM uh, rather than CNN. But the, the, there is a kind of a one a big uh, issue, which is a kind of incremental process. So as you see from the, the all of this equation, maybe this one is fine. So to get this value, we have to wait this one to be computed. So this part cannot be parallelized. Same for this data future context cases. We cannot parallelize anything across the time. And then uh, the, the speech uh, the, uh, the feed, uh, the, the is usually very long uh, the, uh, the, the, the sequence. So it can be 200 or uh, the 1,000 and so on. So this kind of entire uh, the, the, uh, the, the length cannot be uh, the, the parallelized. That is actually making the, uh, the, the process very slow. So LSTM unfortunately have such kind of issues. And then the uh, the LSTM was actually later uh, replaced, uh, mostly replaced with the uh, convolution uh, neural uh, uh, the convolution neural network uh, or transformer. That's the about the LSTM. Any questions or other than? Okay, sounds good. So now I move to the transformer, uh, which is. Actually, uh, the, uh, the, uh, solving some of the issues in the, uh, the, uh, Ricard neural network or LSTM and so on. First, uh, the LSTM is very cool. Uh, we can actually consider the full context, right? As we discuss in the cell information. That is very cool. But the, the drawback is that it is very slow. We cannot parallelize across the frame. However, self-attention is actually considered a full context. And then actually at, at least for across the time, uh, there is a no uh, the, the incremental process. So we can actually parallelize the processing across the time. So due to this kind of uh, the nature, uh, the, the, uh, the self-attention uh, transformer encoder is now uh, widely used in speech recognition. I will explain a bit more uh, carefully about the self-attention. But the self-attention is actually a uh, the, the, uh, the very simple operation. This is basically just we use the weighted summation. Please remember, just using a weighted summation. So first we start to uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, convert our speech features with some kind of a linear uh, the transformation. 
and getting some kind of other, other state, we call it value here. But this is just a linear operation, okay? And of course, this is a linear operation. So we can parallelize across the frame, across the time, right? It's just having uh, the, the, the more uh, the, the, uh, dimension uh, in the, the observation and then uh, the taking the matrix operation, that's it. We can parallelize it, right? And then if we know this kind of uh, the, the weight, uh, attention weight, uh, what self-attention is doing is just weighted summation, okay? This is, you know, that, uh, that appeared in many of our lectures, right? A Gaussian mixture was also weighted sum and so on. So we're just taking the weighted summation. This part is also, we can polarize it, right? Okay. And then the discussion is how to obtain this uh, the attention weight. This attention weight is also simply replaced uh, with the, uh, the, uh, some basic operations. So let's, before I consider this one is uh, attention weight uh, probability, let's consider some kind of a relationship uh, between observation T and T dash. It can be same or it can be different, but let's consider some kind of a scalar value, taking the scalar value and then making that it other some score of the relationship of the different of the speech features, okay? There are a lot of ways to do it, by the way. Uh, and then, but a simple approach is just taking the inner product of the, uh, each of the kind of uh, the, uh, the, the observation with a different uh, linear operation, okay? That's, uh, that each of the people also call it query and the key value, a uh, key uh, the vector and so on. With that, we actually can get some scalar value. Scalar value between the T and the T dash, right? And then we just kind of normalize it. How to normalize it? We can just use a softmax. And then now it becomes a probability. Now it becomes a weight. And then it becomes this one, okay? This is a uh, the, the still uh, the inner product is a matrix operation, so it can also be parallelized. Softmax is also applied uh, as a parallel for each of the instance. So actually, all of this kind of operation is parallelized, but we can consider all kind of uh, the, the 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 connections uh, from other uh, the, the uh, the, the one to uh, the four or one to the, the, the thousand uh, and so on. So this is actually uh, the, uh, the, the self-attention uh, the uh, mechanism. And this is a kind of core part uh, of the transformer encoder. Uh, the, however, uh, transformer encoder is actually a combination of the other uh, the operation, like a feed forward layer, layer normalization, uh, positional encoding, uh, Marchetta attention and the residual uh, the connection and so on. That other part is actually, please uh, also check some of the references or some of you may already uh, know it. But uh, the, understand the context, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, concept that transformer encoder can be easily parallelized and also can consider the other uh, long range uh, the connections and so on. So it sounds like a kind of a, the, the, the uh, the uh, the removing the drawer part of the RSTM part, right? So that uh, there are many people actually using the transformer encoder, uh, not only for the, the many of the applications, but also speech processing. And then uh, the, uh, the actually the, the transformer is uh, the very kind of uh, useful, but actually there is a one uh, the important drawback, which is this computational cost is the square. <clears throat> So this one is, you know, uh, that computing the uh, the uh, the attention weight for all t and all t dash, right? So this means that this computation at uh, the cost is t square. So it is actually uh, very expensive. Uh, the since that we usually consider very long sequence, uh, the in speech, uh, the, the 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 application.
Okay, so uh, that's the kind of a, a summary of the acoustic models. I explained the CNN, uh, recurrent neural network, and the transformer encoder, and so on. All of them actually have the pros and the cons. But for now, most kind of widely used approach is actually combination of the CNN and the transformer, or CNN and the RNN, and so on. So CNN in the beginning to actually get the kind of a, a, the, the local context information and also performing a down sampling. And then after that, LSTM or a transformer to consider the entire context. That is a kind of a, a current uh, the scheme of uh, the using the, the speech recognition acoustic models. Okay, um, I will move to the large uh, language model now. Uh, since I want to finish this part today, by today. <laughs> um, the language model uh, is uh, actually one of the coding assignments now, so people are actually now struggling, I believe, right? Uh, which is actually uh, the enogram that is considered only very uh, the few uh, context, so that the, the, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the, in terms of the n-gram language model, uh, we couldn't actually uh, consider second sentences as uh, nonsense because we only uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the get a kind of local uh, the probability. But if we consider entire uh, the context, and then we can actually understand that second sentence is nonsense, right? So these are kind of an n-gram issue. Enneagram cannot handle the long range uh, dependency. And another uh, the, the issue is that the, the, uh, the, every time we just consider the count, right? And the, every time we consider the one hot uh, representation uh, of the other uh, word. So this uh, means that, the, for example, uh, this uh, the, 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 uh, the three sentence. Uh, the the even uh, the 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 CMU Pittsburgh uh, the sleep uh, actually I couldn't sleep well uh, yesterday so <laughs> the the I woke woke around the the uh, the the, the three or three yeah Halloween so <laughs> I was a bit tired and I couldn't sleep well. Uh, but anyway, so these are the three sentences are, are the, they can be uh, the, the, uh, the okay, right? But uh, uh, the first two sentences can be similar in terms of the concept category, right? So these two sentences ca can be similar and the third sentence can be uh, a little bit different from this, the first se two sentences. We want to design it, but the enogram is actually just consider uh, the one hot vector so that the, uh, the, the, these kind of three are equally different. So which is not very intuitive, right? So this is actually uh, the, another issue. This is also the, the sparse representation, called sparse representation issue. So Enneagram has an issue of the, uh, the, the long range dependency and the sparse representation issue. May have several others, but basically these two are very other critical issues. And then uh, how to uh, solve it? If we have some kind of nice continuous representation at uh, the vector, which kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, the quantify the closeness of the, uh, the, the two kind of uh, the places, and then making the sleep to be four. If we have such kind of representation, uh, we can actually make this sentence to be more meaningful. These two sentences are similar. Third one is very different, right? So this is actually uh, the, the, uh, the called uh, the word embedding. Uh, word can be actually move, mapping to the continuous vector and then can make it actually similar other places and so on. Don't have uh, time to uh, fully carefully check that, but if you check, check this part, uh, uh, that you can find the similar sent similar word is actually located in the similar part. Oh, like that if the, the, some of you have a good eye here, uh, A and N is very similar places. So this is a kind of a, the, the expected uh, the word uh, the, the spaces. 
And uh, the, we want to actually the, obtain this kind of representation. And then um, uh, the, the to uh, the do that, uh, actually uh, the, the recurrent neural network or LSTM language model was powerfully solving two issues. One is the long range dependency, and the other is the this uh, the continuous uh, vector representation. So long range dependence, dependency, maybe I don't have to mention it, right? I already mentioned that, you know, it can consider the entire history with the, uh, the memory cell. And another part is the continuous representation. That is actually also obvious. Please uh, look at uh, this kind of uh, the representation. First part is to convert one hot representation to the continuous vector. One hot representation versus uh, the, at times uh, the multiplied by the uh, uh, the uh, matrix multiplied by the one hot vector, which is to just getting the kind of low uh, the 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 the, uh, the, the uh, element of the matrix, right? This is continuous vector, and by uh, the the, uh, the changing the uh, the size of the dimension of this uh, the the, uh, the matrix, we can actually also continue the continuous vector. Uh, the size of the continuous vector. And if this part is well trained, actually this uh, the, the, the one hot representation can become a continuous representation, embedding space, and then can be more kind of a rich information to distinguish the other uh, two words by considering the meaning uh, the, and so on. So actually by using the recurrent neural network, we can satisfy this kind of uh, the, the, the issues uh, the happen in the uh, the uh, happen in the uh, the, uh, the engram uh, language model and so on. And uh, uh, we usually used to use uh, the LSTM, uh, but actually nowadays people are also starting to use the, uh, the not starting to already quite widely use the uh, the, the transformer. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, transformer cellular attention can be uh, they uh, consider the long range uh, dependency. However, itself is not fully used for the language model. Language model is given the history to predict something, right? But, for example, in this example, we already know the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sum of the current one or future. Uh, W3 is depending on W3, right? So this is actually not predicting anything. And then uh, the, what they will do is just copying this kind of information. So we should avoid this. And how to do that? It's very simple. We just eliminating some of the paths and then making the kind of a transformer to be causal. So instead of uh, the, the original transformer is kind of uh, the, the representing like this. To get, the, so for example, W3, there is a kind of a, the all arrow here, W, uh, the one, two, three, and the, 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 the start, start of symbol and so on, uh, which doesn't do anything. We just copying this one. Instead, we actually are the removing this path and then making the kind of architecture to be causal. Uh, by doing that, we can actually also realize the language model. So this uh, the causal transformer is nowadays uh, the widely used for the, the language model and so on. By the way, how to remove this kind of a, a future arrow? Uh, one way is to use a for loop to uh, the uh, making the, uh, the uh, and then the, the inserting the, some of the future uh, the context. But uh, there is a powerful method uh, which is the masking technique. Uh, instead of uh, the for loop to every time to kind of a com uh, the compute the case uh, of i to j to uh, the set the kind of uh, the, the weight to be zero, we just making this kind of mask. One, 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 uh, the minus infinity, minus infinity, minus infinity. And then uh, the, the multiplied by them. Just prepare this one and the multiplication, uh, element-wise multiplication. This is also uh, parallelized. We don't need an uh, incremental process and so on. By doing that, 
actually uh, this component uh, corresponding to eliminating the, this one. By the way, uh, the why not zero minus infinity? Do you guys know that? Yes, this is exponential. Softmax is exponential. By the way, uh, the, the another way possibly would we would set a i j to zero, right? But the pitch is actually not very good because if we force the sum of the probability to be zero, we cannot satisfy the sum to one condition, right? We have to renormalize it, which has actually additional computational cost. So instead, uh, before we taking a softmax, we performing this kind of masking and then uh, the minus infinity or some uh, the, the special value in there, the, it's depend on the programming languages. Uh, the, uh, to kind of set the minus in, uh, the, the large uh, numbers and so on, and then performing it, and then making this kind of a probability to force to be completely zero, so that the, that we can make this uh, the transformer code. This masking technique is very important, so please remember it. Uh, not only using for the causal, but for example, if we want to kind of limit the uh, history until two or three, like n-gram and so on. Sometimes we won't want to do it. As I said, you know, it's, if it is too long sequence, we, the, the, we have to compute t-square, right? Instead, if we're using the, uh, the short context, uh, we can actually save the computation cost. How to do that, we can also use this masking technique. And also masking technique is used for the various kind of parallelization. And then if the length of the, uh, the sequence is different, we use the padding. And then uh, we try not to kind of attend to the, the padding part. Uh, anyway, masking part, uh, the operation is uh, very important. Uh, also, by the way, masking uh, the operation is the most buggy part. <laughs> Mostly the, the bug uh, that it happens here. So that if you guys uh, implement a masking part by yourself, uh, make sure that, that you would not include uh, the, the bug. Well, if after implementation, something is, the behavior is wrong, First, the, the, the check the masking part. This is very complicated part. Okay, so this other uh, masking technique is actually used for the other uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the language model, which is, as I said, you know, uh, the, the, if we make it causal, and then uh, this part uh, is actually just copying W2 to W2, right? And then the, uh, the uh, the, the causal transformer, we kind of eliminate W2, W3, W4, which is good to, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, for the problem of just predicting the next word. But speech cases, we also want to consider the future context, right? In this case, we actually using the masking technique, just hiding this one and predicting it. And then we actually can also use a kind of uh, the future uh, context and so on. So this uh, the mask uh, approach is also quite uh, the, the often used in the language model, uh, the, especially uh, the, the recent uh, the broad based uh, the model and so on. Okay, that's the kind of uh, the, the, uh, the power of the, uh, the neural network based uh, the language model. And then I just showing the one example that I did uh, the, uh, the got some kind of uh, the, with the, the, some of the, uh, the experiment uh, uh, in my other uh, previous uh, papers. So uh, the, this uh, first line is trigram that uh, uh, you guys are uh, now working on it. And uh, five gram, it's actually by using the wrong context that we can get some good improvement, uh, but actually more uh, the, the context, the more computational cost and also that the performance getting smaller and uh, the performance improvement is smaller to smaller. But if we just changing it to the vanilla recurrent neural network, we can get a big jump by considering the entire context. By using the LSTM language model, we can further get the very good performance and so on. So this is a kind of power of the recurrent neural network. Uh, before the, 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 the recurrent neural network language model and after the recurrent neural network language model, we actually have a very big jump uh, in terms of the performance. Okay, so this is the, the main uh, use for the, the, the speech recognition. But nowadays, 
as you may know, the language model can be actually used to generate the sentence, right? So uh, the by uh, the, the recursively uh, the uh, the feeding uh, some of the other uh, word uh, token and so on, we can actually uh, generate a sentence. So this is actually used to be this is a, uh, the side problem, but now the language model, uh, the large language model, after large language model, it becomes actually main problem. And then uh, there are a lot of example, but one of the example is the uh, prompt based uh, the language model generation, which is uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the basic uh, the techniques using the chat GPT. And uh, um, I actually uh, the, try to have some. Uh, try to do, do some kind of a demonstration. Uh, the, wait a moment. Um, to the right. Let's ask. Which university is the most active for speech recognition research? Carnegie Mellon. By the way, I tried it many times. <laughs> you know, this one is uh, the not deterministic algorithm, so it actually has some kind of fluctuation. But still, uh, the, every time Carnegie Mellon uh, is uh, getting top rank. Um, <laughs> Yeah, also they're talking about the LTI, Language Technology Institute, right? Yeah, very cool, actually. Yes. Okay. And what happened inside is that uh, this is just a kind of uh, the, uh, the application of the language model uh, by using prompt, which university is the most active for speech recognition research, and then putting it here, and then just uh, the, the, we, we first train the language model. And then putting it here, and then just generating it, and then Carnegie Mellon. Okay, so this is a kind of one example, and uh, but it's not only for the text input. Uh, we can also actually feeding the other input, uh, like our uh, other uh, image, as a condition, to here, and then train the language model, and then it becomes image captioning. That is also now very popular and very strong, right? And the uh, translation can also be the same. In this case, it's same text, but different languages. Uh, input is English, and uh, then other generating the Japanese text. That is becomes the, uh, the machine translation. Can we do that for the speech? Yes, we can actually do that. Just condition the language model uh, with the speech input, and then getting some other embedding space. And then after that, we just generating the uh, language model that also becomes a speech uh, recognition. So it's not very simple. We actually using attention mechanism, but that is actually attention based encoder decoder. So attention based encoder decoder encoder part is powerful, but the decoder part is actually based on the language model. Okay, so that's a kind of uh, the today's uh, the, the, the discussion. I first explained about the, the several uh, the, the acoustic model, uh, the, the deep neural network architecture. And this is actually also used for the neural network language model. And then finally, uh, we are uh, showing that the language model can generate a sentence. The given speech input, it can become actually ASR, speech recognition. And that is the one of the other uh, the, uh, the realization of the end-to-end -end speech recognition, which is attention-based uh, encoder decoder. That is actually the coding assignment that is released today. And also, I will explain it in the next week. Uh, that's it. Uh, Ivan, please. Okay. Uh, any question? Quick question? <laughs>